Hi there, welcome back to Animation Teacher. Now today's episode we're going to concentrate on building a prop. Some of the things we'll be covering are cleanup from a rough sketch, we'll be building graphic symbols, setting pivots, putting symbols within symbols, layering them with guide layers, and creating masks. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new project. Now our settings 1920 by 1080 and we'll save this project as Animation Assignment 3 Prop Design. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a sketch that I made from uh, Photoshop actually. So it's a sketch of a hot air balloon. This was super quick so you'll have to forgive me. Now it's coming in pretty big so let's just resize this down so it fits the stage. There we go and we'll resize it a bit. And let's zoom in here. Okay next we're going to name that sketch and we'll create a layer above. We'll lock our sketch and we'll create a clean line layer in which we'll clean up on. Alright I'm going to select the box tool remove the color from the fill and set my stroke. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. What we do with symmetrical shapes in design is we'll just do the one side and then we'll mirror the other side. So let me just start cleaning this side up. Now throughout this video I'm going to speed it up at parts just so we'll save a little bit of time. Okay, so here's the sub-selection tool at work. I like to use that in combination with the free transform tool. So to make things easier for symmetry, we're going to open up the ruler and you can grab that under view. And there's ruler. Okay, so let's pull the guideline to about here. And we'll start adjusting the right hand side. Now the idea is to get it just the way you want and then flip it over to the other side to make things symmetrical. Alright, let's get rid of some of these lines. I'm just going to double click this line to select it and we'll copy this and we'll paste it in place. Now there's a difference between paste and paste it in place. When you paste it in place it'll stay at the exact same place. So when you transform it, in this case, flipping it horizontal, it'll maintain the exact axis. Okay, so let's adjust this. And we'll bring on some more guides. Now the idea is to make sure both sides are symmetrical. So just to verify things, I'm going to be moving this ruler line to the thousand marker so I can do the math in, inside my head a little bit easier. All right, so that goes about there. All right, let's just nudge this a little bit more. That's pretty close. Now that we have a perfectly symmetrical, or close to perfectly symmetrical hot air balloon, I'm going to create a symbol. So this is called balloon comp. Now it's a comp because I'll be actually putting a lot of stuff inside it. So let's go inside and I'll name this balloon outline. And I'll create another layer. On this layer I'm actually going to create a little bit of a overlay band just at the bottom of the balloon here okay I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit alright so I'm gonna utilize the same ruler guide here and I'll make a exact symmetrical copy once again copy paste in place modify transform 
flip horizontal and we'll slide it over and I have this setting to snap to guide so it should snap perfectly okay okay so if you want to get rid of the middle all you have to do is use the sub selection tool select the area and just hit delete So the next step we'll do is we'll distribute to layers. That's Control Shift D, and I'll rearrange these and lock the layers. And we'll begin to clean up the base of the hot air balloon. So let's jump to fast forward. So you'll see me use a combination of the free transform tool and the sub selection tool. Okay, let's create a symbol. I'm going to copy and paste in place and create a symbol. We're going to talk about symbols within symbols now. This particular symbol is called the base door and it's going to be inside the base comp. So let's make the base door first and you'll see that my pivot point actually has to be to the right here. Okay, double click and that sends it to the right. In addition to setting your anchor points, it's important that if you have a symbol within a symbol that the looping is set properly. So for example, in our case, I'm going to have multiple instances of the door. When I speak about instances, I just mean different drawings. So for my base comp, what I'll have inside my base comp symbol will be the base, and I'll also have a symbol of the door and the door I will set to loop or single frame depending on what I want the door to do. Now I don't want the door to continually open and close so I'll likely just set that to single frame. If you had something looping like say a chainsaw blade then you can very well just set the looping to loop and it'll play the differences, the different instances within the symbol. In this case, since I likely won't want it to loop, I'll probably set it to single frame. More on that later. Okay, so that width tool that I'm using now allows you to change the width of the lines. This is one of the advantages of working with line. You can tweak and adjust the line as desired. In this instance, we're actually using the width tool. The width tool was borrowed from an idea in Harmony. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. And I'm just going to fill the door white here so we can hide the inside. Let me just adjust the lines a little bit. All right, that's good enough for now. So the next thing we'll do is I'm actually going to go into this balloon comp here. And first off, let's distribute to layers the base comp. Uh, the next thing I'll do is create a torch. Now I'll use the rectangle tool. As you can see, it's not snapping where I want. So you turn off snapping, you just hit Control Shift question mark. And actually, there's a better way to create a tapered or a rounded square. You can go into rectangle options and then adjust it there. 
Alright, that's a good starting base. Now I'm going to create this symbol as balloon torch. Let's go inside and let's draw a torch. So I'll show you a neat trick here. I'm making circles with green dots in it and I like to use this green because it's like the standard industry cutter green. Now to get rid of all of the greens, Flash has this neat little function called find and replace. To bring it up just hit control F and you can find the colors that you want and replace it with in this case nothing, a complete alpha. So now all the green is gone, let's go outside. and distribute to layers. Okay, so I'm going to use that clean line layer to create lines or ropes for our balloons. I'll distribute to layers. Now when you distribute just raw shape or raw art, it'll just layer it, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. So I'm going to name this line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. I'm going to copy the frames by highlighting the frames on the timeline. I'll go inside the base comp and I'll place it in the base comp. Paste layers on the timeline. So now it's inside the base comp. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is uh, color pick some colors here and paint our base. What's nice about Flash is once you pick your color, you can place them into these color swatches and add color swatches by clicking this page button here. I'll show you again. Color pick your color go to the color swatch, click the page, and that'll attribute a new color swatch. What's great about color swatches is they save within your FLA file. So if you were to hand this off to somebody else, they too will be able to access the color swatches. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the same layer and create a base underlay and a base overlay. Okay, I'm going to hide the base underlay. For the base overlay, I'm just going to delete all the stuff that I don't need underneath and we'll layer it accordingly. So you can see now I can layer my lines, my rope, in front and behind uh, the respective base underlays and overlays. Alright, so the next step is we're going to take care of this base door. I'm going to color this. Readjust just a touch. I'm using the sub selection tool here. Alright, so that's pretty good. The importance of having a symbol within a symbol, we're going to create a second instance. I'll hit F6 and I'm going to hit the distort tool. It's similar to Photoshop. You can actually distort your objects here. And I'm going to create an open door.
So the advantage of having a color swatch is you don't have to double click outside the symbol and color pick your color. You can simply go to the color swatch and select it. Okay, so that should do it. We have an open and close. Now if we go outside, we can set the looping options. I'll extend the timeline so you can see a loop here. Actually, we want it set to single frame for now. And I'll close the door. Okay, let me just clean up my timeline a little bit. And the next step is we're going to go inside and I'm going to create a balloon rim symbol and I'll lock that. And let's just hide that. We'll work on the balloon outline and create sections. So what we'll do next after we have these balloon outline segments is I'm going to color each of these segments random colors. And we're going to use these random colors as masks. And I'm actually going to copy and paste on a new layer all these individual colors here. And I'm going to use these colors as masks. So yellow mask, red mask, green mask, blue mask. So I'll show you a neat little trick here. We're going to import some patterns here and use the masks we just created to reveal the pattern. So I downloaded a few patterns here. Each one of those masks will utilize a pattern here. So the yellow one will be used for the yellow mask. I'll rearrange this so the mask is on top of the pattern. I'll right click the yellow mask and hit mask. It'll lock both layers. If I want to adjust the pattern underneath the mask, I just unlock it, adjust, and then lock the mask and the layer. I'll show you again one more time. File, import, we'll select a pattern. Okay, actually we'll need a separate layer for that pattern. I'll copy and paste in place, and I'll mask that. Rotate, and lock it. No, nope, let's do this instead. Okay, so let's try it, I'll show you it again. Okay, so file import to stage, select mask, put it under the mask, right click, mask. Do it again, file import, select the texture, open, and just be sure you're putting it underneath the mask, adjust it, and then right click, mask. So let me just readjust the pivot point. And I'm just going to hide the rulers and hide the guide. OK, so next up, let's color the balloon rim. Let's create a layer and import the texture. Let's readjust this pattern so it works. Right click mask. Our last symbol here is the torch. So we'll use the line gradient tool to color. To use the line gradient tool, double click one end and select a color in this case a dark red, and then select the second point and select another color. You can have multiple points and you can edit it multiple ways. To edit, use the gradient transform tool and with the circle you can rotate it like so. That's pretty good. 
All right, so that pretty much does it for our prop from line to final product. And we have a fully functional hot air balloon, a fully functional torch, and of course our base with fully functional line or rope and fully functional door. That's our hot air balloon. Let's save that project. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Next week we'll start on character animation and later on character building. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching Animation Teacher. Goodbye.